welcome back. We are on to session two uh, of flight controls. And here we are going to be exploring the um, ailerons and the aileron uh, control trim. And um, along the, with this will be flight spoilers, but the flight spoilers as it relates to the ailerons because they are tied together in the purpose of controlling the role of the aircraft. So um, just kind of get, and just to mention too, the ailerons we got, you know, uh, ailerons on the right and the left of the aircraft, they're not moving at the same time when they get deployed. It's, you know, one of these things where they alternate, it's an alternate movement to one another, right? Yeah, correct, right. Anastasia. And just to okay. elaborate a little more on that, essentially from the control input, which is up in the cockpit with the pilot's control column, control wheel specific, you're driving like a car, I use the thumb technique is if I'm going to the left, the one on the upper one, that's so it's pointing, the upper one's pointing to the aileron that is up. Conversely, if I go to the right, the right aileron is up. So the top thumb always points towards the one of the ailerons that should be up. So if you're ever doing a rig check and you want to know if you got the rigging correct, just turn the call, control column and look out. If I'm pointing the top thumb, should be pointing to the one that's up. Bottom line. Hit. Okay. All right. Good. Good rule of thumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so and remember the CW is not for country western. It stands for control wheel. When if you see that in a maintenance publication, we're talking about the aileron. I say it says aileron CW. We're talking about the aileron control wheel. That's what that means. Um, and so once that the pilot actually you know moves that that wheel then that's when that domino effect happens and and so we're going to be exploring what happens what are we talking about as far as you know underneath the flight uh, flight compartment floor because that's where it's you've got these cables because remember it's a mechanical input um, from those control columns, you know, going underneath. Right. So then you got this whole chain reaction with those the mechanical linkages, you know, to all these different pieces that we're going to be unveiling here in just a minute. So, um, so let's go ahead and talk about these components. Just kind of mention. Just remember, we do identification. What are the names of them? And then we're going to go a little bit into explaining each one and kind of how they put get you know work together with all of this. So let's 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 take a tour over here to the flight compartment. So what's in the flight compartment? We've got the control wheels, obviously, on the, and then we also have um, the um, switches. You know, we've got trim switches on the top of the columns. Is that right? Well, actually, the trim switch, uh, some right. airplanes had that, but this one in particular, it's down on the electrical panel, which is uh, down on the lower quadrant. It's two switches, and they have to work depend uh, You have to work them unisonly. Uh, one, even though two switches, and they have to work together, obviously, to make that actuation. Okay. All right. Okay. And now let's go ahead and move on to um, head over to the EE compartment. And what you're, what you're going to find there, and this is in the forward part of the EE compartment, is you're going to find the control wheel drum and also the aileron transfer mechanism. We'll be talking a little bit more on the transfer mechanism to get a, a, you to really understand that what's happening there with that. Um, but what about, there's a lot and, uh, with the main um, landing gear wheel well with what's there. And so what you have there is you've got your actuators, the two autopilot actuators in particular. And you also have um, your input shaft. You've got your, um, that's where your aileron feel and centering unit is located. Um, your two aileron PCUs. That's where you'll find that. And then also the body quadrants. You're, there's two body uh, aileron body quadrants. There's also wing qu quadrants, but we're just talking about the body quadrants located there. And of course, we got the wing area. So, gee, I wonder where we're going to find the wing quadrants. But here, you know, we got components on the wing. So, what are we talking about here? We got output uh, cables because we've got input cables and we have output cables, but your output cables are located uh, on the wings. And then also, your, that's where your aileron wing quadrants are located, those, right. those units. You've got balance panels as well, and you've got the aileron, and you've also got an aileron balance tab. Okay, so let's just kind of go through this process. So remember, we're just going back to what we're saying when you were describing, you know, when the pilot actually moves that wheel. Um, when he does that, there's a lot of things happening. Yeah, if I take it from here, okay, stage, sure. what I'd like to do, and uh, let's, in a normal operation, uh, first of all, we have the captain side, which is the airplane left, steady in the cockpit, captain's on the left, co-pilot's on the right, we also use a vernacular pilot and co-pilot, so the captain, first officer, however you want to use on that. So the point is, the captain, when he moves his control wheel, 
he is actually moving the cables in conjunction through a uh, mechanical linkage to the first officers and when he moves his control wheel the first officers control wheel moves in conjunction so they move together in their normal operation however the difference with this is the input from the captain's side goes into a elevator fill unit then goes into the PCU the aileron power control unit as Anastasia mentioned earlier and ironically speaking these are interchangeable by the way just to let you know right. and from there with the control switch on on the P5 panel we have hydraulic fluid that allows the fluid actually to move the ailerons and all this is transmitted back to you in the control fit uh, column and uh, if you make this analogy uh, as in like power steering while you're driving um, basically it's a smooth it's not excessive force and it just basically allows it to be a lot more fluidity first officer side let's look at at that point when he moves his control wheel left and right in normal operations the captain also would have his control wheel moving as well too and remember mm -hmm. when the pilots are flying the airplane it's only one pilot flying not two it's not both guys have their hands on the yoke so when we say that we're talking about the command input if you will for the specific control wheel just want to delineate that to make sure right. yes okay yeah. so again back at the first officers control input he makes his input now simultaneously as I indicated through the aileron transfer mechanism it does move the captains so but actually what the first officer is doing at this point he's actually moving a spoiler mixer now this spoiler mixer in with conjunction goes through a ratio and if we have more than 10 degrees or some textbooks will say 11 degrees not get hung up on the number but the reality is approximately in the 10 degree frame mm -hmm. we will actually have from the movement of the aileron we will have a supplemental help with the flight spoilers, spoilers right. flight spoilers mm -hmm. well we'll get into that but there's eight total there's four on the left four on the right so we'll just keep it right. that at this point like now now that's in a normal operation mm -hmm. uh, again why do we want this well it helps with the role characteristics of the airplane but why can't we just use the ailerons you might ask well right slower... I was just going to ask that okay so why in case they have questions well when you're in this goes back in aerodynamics and uh, look up for aerodynamics when I do my sessions there I'll get in more depth with you but when you go into slow flight your controllability with the aerodynamic features reduces so you want more control surface capability thus the engineers made flight spoilers to work in conjunction with the ailerons so that's kind of that in a nutshell uh -huh. now do we want to go on with let's say we have a block right uh, yeah I understand what you say yeah let's do it okay and so at this point we've explained normal operations uh, through the aileron transfer mechanism now what happens if we have a jammed aileron doesn't matter and for simplistic uh, case let's just say and the aileron control so who would be so the captain's flying captain's right in, now okay captain so has he's he's on the control column okay. he's flying mm -hmm. and so what's happening is for whatever reason the aileron jams left or right doesn't matter he's flying he can't move with this with this aileron transfer mechanism what happens to the first officer he he's able to move his so now there would be a transfer of controls because his can move so with that said when he's moving his control wheel what is he moving again he's moving that spoiler mixer unit now when are those spoilers going to actually flight spoilers going to rise the answer was approximately 10 degrees 11 degrees based upon the position of the actual aileron but in this case the control column now moves and that's where that angle comes from it's the angle as you move on the control wheel itself because as far as we know as we indicated that aileron is stuck so now we're going to have the flight spoilers assisting in the roll 
Yeah, I mean, it's a nice backup. I mean, it's it, from that's yeah, intense. And I just, things. again, to reiterate here, the two inputs between the first officers mm -hmm. and the captains, is specifically the differentiation here is that elevator feel unit. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not, excuse me, the aileron feel unit. I'm just getting ahead of myself here. Uh, and also the um, spoiler mixer. Okay. Think of a wall right. in between. First officer is with a spoiler mixer. Captain is basically using that field center unit, mm -hmm. which goes to the PCU. Right. Now, let's look at the first officer. Well, he f his fr freezes okay, up. Okay, so his jams up. He has no control. Okay. Because he can't control his. So then, what can the captain do? Well, the captain at this point, well, he says I have the airplane, so he'll fly because the first officer is jammed. Stop. Not moving. Now, when he moves his control wheel, remember what I said before? What's it moving specifically? He's moving that elevator, I keep saying elevator, the field center, field center unit. unit. Right. So, when he's moving that, which goes into the PCUs, which again would move the aileron itself. Now, let's say the first officer, he you know, works out a lot and he just managed to break it loose. Well, he breaks it loose, and because of that aileron transfer mechanism, they both work in unison again as they're going. Now, the same input, though, depending where that break is, we don't know, mm -hmm. but essentially, it would be the captain's input that is going to affect that roll control at that time. Right. Even exactly. though the break is there, they're moving. It all depends where that jam occurs. Right. But again, the whole thing of this is the backup, as Anastasia right. said. Exactly. That's the whole idea with this thing. Um, and that's how they, they come together. Um, so, you know, you can see that there is the, a connection, obviously, between the two. Um, and, you know, when you look at your diagram and your handouts, um, that you'll see that there are different um, components that connect the two. Um, and so you've got the bass drum, uh, excuse me, the um, control drum, and uh, the bus drum. And as part of that, so um, those, and then you also have a force transducer and also a crank. Um, the transducer it just connects the crank uh, and the control drum. Um, the bus drum and the crank are part of that shaft. Um, so when the pilot turns the control wheel, well, he's turning that shaft, which is, of course, turning the crank and so forth. It's going through that transducer to control um, to the control drum um, so that it can control the left body cables and that's what that's for so um but yeah that just and you explained about the transfer mechanism very important part being able to have that actually in working order um and maintained because an event yes if you have a jam of one and this you know you don't have normal operation you want to be able to rely on that at least you'd hope yes. that it's a functioning piece you know between the two you always have to have mm -hmm. that backup mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that was that was done really well. And of course, be, keep in mind too, we've got hydraulic power, you know, going to those PCUs. You know, that's always happening. But except right. for when, except for when we have a non-normal condition, um, those. Well, just explain that. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, you lose lost the hydraulic powers. Can you still fly? Absolutely. I mean, you still have roll control specifically. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what's happening now? Remember, I made the analogy of power steering. Mm -hmm. Well, think of this in the sense that now I am manually doing it. I am actually using the resistance of the airflow over right. the wings. When, so when I deploy and execute that input, I'm fighting it. And that's for all control surfaces. Mm -hmm. So just to think about it, that's the nice thing, as we talked about earlier with hydraulics being the energy. Well, that energy helps reduce to make it smooth. Right. Make your exactly. job easier, as we say, kiss, keep it simple. Yeah, exactly. So we've explained um, the connection between flight spoilers as assisting um, the ailerons. Ailerons, you know, hopefully by the whole, whole, after all this whole thing, you'll know very quickly ailerons are about roll control. So um, we will um, take a break, and we will continue on with explaining in detail more about the flight spoilers.